I was talking to Brad and Landon. I'm like, okay, well, well, let's let's do something to help the health insurance space, and let's actually break down some numbers on how to make their re a reality, right? So we came up with the idea that I would quantify how you can earn 50k in open enrollment this year. Brad's going to walk through how to qualify, okay? How to actually qualify, walk through the sales process, and actually close. And then we're going to have um, Landon, who's actually going to jump in and talk to us about how to actually uh, cashify, right? So how do you turn uh, this in? How do you turn this into freaking money, right? At the end of the day, how do you make some money from this? So we, uh, I want to, I want to share the numbers we were walking through, which is I don't have a whiteboard and all that to actually walk through it. However. Um, here's how you earn 50k this open enrollment really quick. Okay. Also, um, it's kind of funny you can't see this. I've got video playing on one screen and audio on the other, uh, and I've got two different computers going. That's the only reason I was only way I was actually able to make this work. As weird as that sounds. Okay. So um, appreciate everybody being on uh, 50k. Okay. So if you if you take 50k and you're gonna have to walk through the math with me, um, if you take 50k divided by eight weeks. Okay, you're gonna have to teach catheter out. You have to take some notes. I want you to follow along with this math with me. Okay, if you divide it by eight weeks, you get six thousand, and 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 you get six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars per week. And I'd love for people to throw in chat um, as, that you're tracking me, that you're um, excited for these numbers. Okay, so six thousand two hundred fifty bucks a week. If you divide that by seven hundred and fifty dollars per cell, which that's what um, Brad tells us is actually low. Correct. Yeah, there's some there's some people on this call that are like 750 from a sale, man. That's a, and that's that's the annual commission, of course. But that is that would be you know average to uh, a below average, really. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and for for and and you're gonna actually walk through how that's actually low, right? So if you take six thousand two hundred fifty bucks, you divide it by seven hundred fifty dollars per sale, you get nine sales per week, right? So how do you get nine sales a week? And we're going to walk through a lot of specifics, but yeah, I'm going to take it a step further real quick as you guys are taking notes and staying with me. Uh, what's up, Chad? What's up, Chris? Uh, 60 leads at a 50% appointment set rate um, is 30 appointments set per week, right? And we're going to talk through how you really need about 60 to 90 leads a week. But if you set 30 appointments, and you get about two thirds to 70% that actually show up. You end up with about 21 sits or 21 presentations per week where you actually walk through and ask 21 people to buy every single week, right? If, you, if, if, you're, if you're like Brad, you're gonna have a higher closing rate. However, we're gonna use a 40% close rate, which brings us to that nine sales a week. Um, we're gonna, Lana's gonna walk, talk through the marketing, but about 60 leads is about, about a grand at $1,500 a week, about 12 to 1250, $1,300 a week on average. But if you take the marketing cost, minus the commissions you're still profiting just shy of five thousand dollars a week which equals a 79 percent margin which in business is freaking stellar <laughs> yeah who wouldn't who wouldn't do that who would invest that kind of money to earn that kind of return be crazy not to yeah if, if that's the return they're going to get i will give everyone in the webinar thirteen hundred dollars a week done <laughs> Man, you see, you see. So we've got uh, we've got Shane Saunders. I made two hundred fifty thousand dollars during OE last year. So I'm looking for some marketing tips, right? We're going to talk about the marketing. We're going to talk about some ways that you can you can uh, leverage that marketing to set more appointments, right? We're using some high numbers. That forty percent close ratio. I guarantee you, ninety percent of the people on this call right now, ninety percent of the people on this webinar are not closing their sits at forty percent, right? Not not there's probably not more than 70% uh, that are closing at that high of a ratio. And the reason is, and I'll, and I'll kind of tee this up for you, Landon, if you want to take it over. But the reason is because we're working with a lot of people who came to us, right? So there's a big difference between outbound and inbound, right? We're closing 40% because they're, they're inbound, right? They're highly qualified. So we are going to talk about qualifying. We're going to talk about closing. And then we're going to talk about some products that you need in your tool belt, right? Some, some commissionable products where if that client fits that mold, then we are going to steer them that direction, okay? Um, but Landon, you can talk about the leads and, and the, the difference between inbound and outbound, of course. All right, well, one of the things I wanna do, first off, I'm not very familiar with GoToWebinar. Cody, if you can hear me, um, how do I share my screen, buddy? Like, I was trying to figure this out. 
Oh, we can't hear you, dude. You're muted. But let me actually see if I can make you, um, you should be able to be the presenter and then actually walk through um, and be able to share your screen. I think it's probably got me as the main. So I, th I think I just made you the presenter to where you can actually click so I sharing that. capabilities in the top right. right. So. so here we go. All right. So <laughs> there we go. let me walk through. Um, it looks like I'm sharing my screen right now. And I think I turned off the actual um, screens of us three. Um, but I'm not super familiar with them driving. We, we, some of our office staff went home. Normally they're driving this, so I'm trying to click through this, so I apologize. So, okay, so let me walk through some marketing. Okay, so about geez, eight months ago, uh, Brad, Cody, and I were talking about, uh, man, if we could figure out a health insurance funnel, uh, it could be a game changer because the premiums, the commissions are great. Like, what do we got to do to figure this thing out? And so, you know, Brad and I, and Cody all sat down and, and we, we took a, essentially a strategy that we knew would be a good start to work, but like we couldn't quite get it. It was kind of clunky. It was moving. It was the lead, the CPL was a little too high. The close rate was too low. It was just wasn't really working out that well. So over the course of, I said $85,000 on the promo video that I spent on health insurance. We're now over six figures of actual health insurance ad spend to generate these marketing funnel uh, leads on Facebook right now. And so we've learned a lot of um, things along the way. And so what I want to do is kind of give you guys some quick little KPIs and understanding of kind of how this works and what your general KPIs need to be and kind of the overall strategy from beginning to end. Okay. So the first thing I want to do. And no is screenshotting this screen, by the way, guys, no screenshotting this screen. Yeah, this is don't, actually don't even think Brad's. Yeah, this is Brad's like actual lead flow that he's getting right now. So don't be <laughs> taking his dang leads, right? Um, okay, which I guess you've I already closed them all. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't yeah, have shared it. You're all closed, exactly. We trust these people. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right. pull out. Um, I'm gonna pull out uh, since Brad's a big time baller. I'm gonna pull out $8,500 of ad spend um, that he's done in a in a period of time. I'm gonna break down the numbers and I'm gonna kind of give you that first. So 8,500 bucks of ad spend. Um, just to give you some KPIs, that $8,500, um, where we showed that the our call to action ad, which was a landing page conversion campaign, 405,000 times uh, to 197,000 people. Um, we've got some targeting tricks that I can go through. I'm not going to go through right now, but um, that those targeting tricks really help with the audience because we're trying to go after a high income uh, net worth individual. Um, those 197,000 individuals. Um, we actually ended up getting 533 uh, qualified prospects uh, through our funnel, and that was at $15.93 a lead. Now, at first, it's like, oh, $15.93 a lead, like whoopty crap. Well, that's really not, that's amazing and because we captured 16, actually, actually more than that. I, we've been through multiple iterations of this landing page, but we've qualified these leads 16 different times in terms of like qualifying questions. Um, ages, ages of the kids, spouse, household income, do you currently have insurance? These types of, of funnels that we've been able to develop. So we, we, we take a, an ad that is um, on Facebook, do a landing page conversion campaign, drop them into a qualifying funnel that qualifies the lead to really what Brad basically told us to do. Essentially the main qualifying questions that he has to identify the overall product that he's able to place these individuals into. So $15.93 per lead after answering 16 qualifying questions. Then what we do and which is Landon, they, go ahead. Which Landon is freaking crazy, by the way. For for those that are watching, chiming in on chat, um, it's it's that that that's nuts. I mean, the average vendor, just to give you guys some like actual data to 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 compare this to, an actual lead vendor would get five, six, maybe eight form fields. They would sell this lead. A vendor could not sell this lead for less than sixty bucks. Oh yeah, and Absolutely. because they're getting. 16 different form fields i'm telling you from an actual qualification standpoint now th this isn't a lay down and we're not freaking selling them for you but we are getting we are ratcheting the intent up to get 16 fields filled out is like unbelievable it's unheard of and what i has been able to pull off from a health insurance marketing standpoint with the help of brad actually watching over our shoulder and actually helping us build this out and perfect this is freaking insane. I've never yeah. seen this level of intent ever. Well, and, and Brad looking over my shoulder is scary because he's a big guy, man. He, he rolls his sleeves up in those full sleeve tabs. I gotta man. stand on a like, chair. I'm like, geez, bro. Uh, no, so so he's right. Like, I, I would, um, this would be a, a, a 45 to $60 lead if you were to buy it, um, in, in my opinion. But um, I digress. So 
what, what ends up happening is, is these individuals are, uh, there's two things I want to stop on before I move on to the next section. The first thing is you shouldn't be buying leads anyways at this point. We've evolved past that if, uh, from a health insurance you know, standpoint. One of the main reasons that I feel like it's the most important reason is because we showed this ad 4,000, or if I'm sorry, 400,000 times to 197,000 people with Brad Hannon's brand and impression, right? So what happened was, is if you buy leads, you're, you're ba like, let's just say you want to do health insurance leads from Secure Agent Leads, okay? Fantastic. We'll sell you $45 leads. That's fine. We'll make, you know, 25 bucks a lead on you. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Some people prefer to do business that way just because it's clean and clear. But I'm going to have to run that from my pages that has nothing to do with your brand. And I, if I showed you my phone, Cody and I get literally hundreds of direct messages a day of people that aren't actually filling out the lead form in the way we're intending it to, but they're actually direct messaging the actual Facebook account to try and get into some sort of like, hey, I have a question or like, hey, I want more information or whatever. Well, unless they actually go through our actual landing page conversion campaign, we're not capturing that lead. So there's a lot more opportunity there than uh, if you run it from your own page and your own brand. Does that make sense? Am I, I mean, am I, am I, are you guys tracking with me 100%. on that? Okay. Yeah, no, so 100%. And, and for those of you, for those of you guys that are wondering like what he's talking about, this is why I spend the money with them, right? Because I don't have to know what he's talking about. That's why it works. But go ahead, Landon. Well, my, the main point is, is that if you were to spend $8,500 on health insurance leads, even if the numbers were the same from a, like a CPL standpoint or, or whatever, that they wouldn't be. But even if they were, don't you think it's beneficial to show your brand to 197,000 people in our target market? I mean, good freaking grief. I mean, that's a no brainer. One hundred percent. So not only is it cheaper, 100%. you're also branding yourself along the way and, you know, getting into additional conversations with individuals that aren't actually selling the lead form, but showing interest in the lead. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, there's okay. a couple other, there's a couple other pieces to that too. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple other pieces to that too, because not only because when when we're when we're using your actual Facebook page, your actual per, actual personal brand, not only are not only are we putting in for in front of 200,000 people, which brands you along the way. However, you're going to get page likes that you would never normally get. You're going to get messages sent directly to your Facebook page, and you're going to get in conversations that you would have never normally got. And you're going to get you're going to gain followers and attention that will pay off down the road as well. And a lead vendor will never do that. They'll build their own page and their own brand. Correct. And and there's that's just to me that's like the, that's two years ago version of, of how this thing works. So okay. So once we develop the lead, I want to walk you through uh, what this is. Is this is our uh, what we call Samson, which is um, basically our our automation system. So the days of taking a Facebook lead to a spreadsheet are, in my opinion, over in terms of return on investment. Anybody I know that's spending real money on Facebook right now has automations that are going after leads developed and is not generating these leads onto a spreadsheet. So what you're looking at right here is an example. This is actually Brad's account um, uh, that we're looking at right now of Samson. And what you're looking at is the dispositions of the lead right now. So what we're trying to do is, is on the front side is qualify a high buyer intent lead that is then into this system. If you can see, this is tagged as like health quiz B. Uh, that's the quiz that we got the best results on. So that's what we're scaling right now. Um, and so it's qualified with the 16 points of, of like, you know, qualification. They're coming into the system. Now, as an example, the automations that we have set up day one, the first thing we do is we make sure speed to lead is extremely fast. And so we actually automate an automatic phone call to the lead. It calls the lead, connects to the lead, and then rings Brad's office and someone tries to connect with that agent. If that doesn't actually take place, we then text and email the agent right away on day one. Uh, on day two, we're texting and emailing. Day four, we're texting and emailing. Day six, we're texting and emailing, et cetera. So that's nine touch points that we're using to kind of foster the lead because we're trying to do one of two things. We're trying to get the lead to uh, engage with us quick and early because the second they engage with any of our automations, the system will automatically move them over to a hot lead, which will pause all the other uh, automations and start a new set of automations. So basically what happens is, is, is I'm going to let Brad explain how they're working these, these leads or whatever here in a minute. But basically these are the dispositions that have their own automation set up so that the whole point of this is to try and get them to appointment booked. What appointment booked is, is we have these nine touch points trying to get them to automatically set an appointment with us or make an inbound phone call or Brad's team is working these new leads to try and actually manually move them over to the hot lead section and then move them over to the appointment booked. 
and then move them over that way. And before I get into the other scope of work that we're doing with Brad, I want to kind of pause for a second and have Brad talk about the premium and just some some of the sales numbers that, that he's seeing as well. If that's all right with you, Brad. Absolutely, absolutely. And like I said, so from a from a I know we have we have individuals of from all walks of life here, right? We've got in, agents that are just starting. We've got agents that are investing in their agency, right? They're not looking for leads for just them. They're looking to feed an agency. We can take it off the screen if you want for now, because then we don't have okay. to give them all of my client data. But uh, the the uh, it's just names, anyways. You won't find them, and if you do, then they sell them for me. You know what I mean? It's it, just let me know. But uh, but but we're we're dealing with. I mean, we've got we had over 400 people register for this thing. That that covers you know agents leaders agency owners you name it okay so if you're an entry-level agent here's what i want you to know this program may not be for you right now okay but you want to shift your business we actually um but interestingly enough i was going through with one of my top rookie agents going through his deals 55 percent of his deals since he started in about three months he's written one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars in premium um in 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 all of his deals, 55% of his deals have come from actually cold calling, uh, cold calling business owners, things like that. The other 45% has, he, has either been paid leads or warm market. And so this is not your one and only, you know, this you just rely on this thing and it, and it, and it just, you know, that's that's not the way to do it. You I mean, you, you first of all, you wanna get into the business, you wanna get your feet wet, you wanna be able to close these leads. So obviously starting with an aged lead, you know, like like Landon was talking about, not a bad deal. I mean, heck, we bought we bought ten thousand age leads from Secure Agent Marketing not too long ago. My my one of my rookie agents just closed one. Um, so there's all different ways to to obtain business. But of all of the different ways that I've obtained a a, a prospect, this has been the most uh, the most beneficial from two standpoints. One, they they want to talk to you about insurance, regardless. Like if you can help them. Great. If you can't help them because they can't afford it or something, that makes sense. But I have talked to very few people that have come through that. That I mean, 16. I didn't even know it was 16 questions. I, I mean, I knew it was. We put them through. We put them through the ringer, of course. But I didn't know we put them through 16. By the time they get through those 16 questions, they want to talk about health insurance, right? I haven't. I haven't got on the phone with anybody. None of my agents have got on the phone with anybody that didn't want to have a conversation with. The best lead is the lead that talks to you, that answers the phone, right? I mean, you can buy a hundred dollar appointment. If they don't answer the freaking phone, it's worth the same thing as that dollar age lead. It doesn't matter, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is from a from a from a marketing perspective, we, we've talked to more high premium individuals through Samson, through through the Facebook ads for running than any other any other source that I've ever seen before. Like, I mean, I've used telemarketers offshore. I've used, I mean, I've used a lot of different things. This has brought in more high premium policies than anything I've I've really ever seen. So those two things are the are the best things we've seen so far. The the third thing I want to hit on real quick before we get back into some marketing, I am going to go through some qualification qualification. I am going to go through some qualifying, okay? And I'm going to go through some products that you need to have in your tool belt as well as my actual presentation from start to finish to close. I'll do it in about 10 minutes. So there, there, we're gonna give you some actual nuggets to take back to, to your production. It is open enrollment. I know that you're trying to write business, so we're certainly going to do that. But the key here is consistency. So Landon talks about $8,500 in ad spend, and you know I've, I've seen 530 leads come through there. We've closed at a very high percentage. All of that stuff is good, but I never stopped it. From the moment I started to now, we, we've run it consistently. And I'll just be completely honest with you. There's been multiple conversations with Landon about in the beginning. There was multiple conversations about, hey, I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it just doesn't seem like it's working to its full potential. And Landon said, hey, you gotta give it, you gotta give it 30 days. You gotta give it 60 days. You gotta let it take get traction, right? Now the thing's got so much traction that I can't, I can't, I keep jacking up the ad spend, and it's and and I can't like keep like I want it, I want more and more and more because they're coming through. I mean, we had probably six appointments, five appointments come through just today. And that the agents are working that this is this thing is is just growing exponentially the longer I stay with it. So everything, what is it? Everything works a little, nothing works a lot, right? You've got to stay consistent with it. So hey, can I tell uh, you we've had a great experience. Let me tell you why. I want people to understand the reason. It's important that I understand that I explain this nuance. One of the things that I've learned that this is maybe one of the tips that's worth 
the whole freaking webinar, right? This might be considered maybe a little bit of secret sauce, but I'm gonna give it away anyways. One of the things that we do is while we're qualifying these individuals, we're putting a remarketing pixel on the thank you page after they've made it through all of our um, like qualifying questions so that anyone that didn't actually qualify or, or qualify themselves out of our funnel, they're never making it to that thank you page because we've kicked them out of the funnel already, right? So what's happening is the reason that consistency is so, so important is that when Facebook sees 533 conversions that made it through this funnel, they can then identify the audience that I cannot target as a, a marketer, but Facebook has the information on what this pedigree of this individual is, and they go find more of those for us because why? They want Brad to make more money, so he jacks up his freaking ad spend. So most people don't understand why consistency matters. The thing that frustrates, frustrates me the most is that Facebook works so good that you can still make money off the first 30 leads a campaign produces, and those are the crappiest 30 leads that you'll get out of the campaign altogether. You and I, Brad, had more, we almost fought each other in the first 60 days about the quality of the leads and all that. <laughs> you would have kicked my butt. I, I ain't going to beat you up, you know. But my point is, is that I was like, just chill, man. Just chill. You know, you got to give it a second. You got to let the party <laughs> kick in. It's a warm audience, and that's the secret. So anyways, I'll pass it back to you, buddy. I, I have no chill. And, and if you guys saw Cody's black eye a while ago, it was because he got in the middle of me and Landon. It wasn't, he didn't lose a boxing match. He got in the middle of me and Landon because we were going at it over this thing. But really though, I mean, it, I, I came to Landon with a, with a concept. I would have never known how to, to, to initiate it. Uh, but I thought, I thought this is scalable, right? This isn't just for me. This is scalable. Everybody can do this um, or anybody can do this and they can set it up for, I mean, what's the, What's the minimum that you're doing now, Landon, as far as like for an, if I'm an individual, okay, and then I want to get to just so you know, then I want to get to some actual, some actual, you know, you, we're going to bring the leads in, right? So here's the, here's the flow of this. Obviously, we're talking about how to bring the leads in. It's only good if you can close those leads. So now we're going to get you to that close. But before I do, Landon, the, the minimum for like an individual, if I'm just, you know, a regular guy in the streets, just starting out in this. I always tell people you can invest time in this business or you can invest money, right? You invest time or money. Okay, if you have some money to invest in, and you're an individual, in just an individual producer on the streets, what would the minimum ad spend, what would the minimum cost to this be to, to, to see some decent volume? Minimum spend is $1,500 a month of total budget. We have a little bit of a setup fee to build all this stuff out, but $1,500 a month of actual budget will get you started. Now, you probably will be spending more than that, like Brad is quickly. Um, but you typically people come in at either 1500 a month or 2700 a month. Um, that covers management fees, ad spend, et cetera. We'll get into that later, um, Brad, but that's the, min the minimum budget is, is 1500. The reason it's 1500 is because Facebook is built on a daily ad spend. And if you don't have enough ad spend per day to get any traction, your ads are turning off before you can actually get leads and it's just not functional. So. If you're gonna spend less than that, then don't don't do marketing. Just go buy leads from somebody, um, and and hope that works. But it's not really, in my opinion, sustainable with, with how you want to do it. But that's why it's fifteen hundred dollars a month, just to, to add some clarity there. Yeah, hundred percent. And you want to build it up. You want to build your business up to a point where, you know, hey, fifteen hundred dollars a month, a great investment. It's it's gonna. You're, I mean, we just we just quantified it for you. Seven fifty, the average commission per deal. You sell two policies a month, and you've paid for it, right? And that is the goal starting out in your first 30 days, 60 days. I mean, you just want to cover your expense while that thing really starts to take take hold, take get traction and all that stuff. So um, that's the marketing side of things. I'll leave that stuff to Landon. Don't even try to touch it. The reason why I lean on them so heavily is because I don't want to mess with it. I would rather be in it. And so I actually am still in the system for the first, you know, 15, 20 days. I actually, uh, I probably hoarded most of the leads because I'm like, man, I want to see... I want to I want to make sure this is a good investment. I want to make sure that these are solid leads coming through. I sold like two really good deals and I'm like, "Oh, it's good." And I put I passed to the agents. They've been loving it. It's been a great thing. So, I want to talk to you real quick about about the 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 number one thing that I think plagues I would I would venture to say insurance agents in general, but not, but but more specifically health insurance and Medicare agents. I, I myself struggle with this, right? And, it, and it's that gray area, right? So I've, I've coined something that I like to call the two-way street approach, right? And the reason why I coined it that is because if you ever been to a, a two-way intersection, okay, like you're, you're, you're pulling up, you can go right or you can go left. Have you ever thought about like just going straight? Like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just, I know the road goes right or the road goes left, but I'm just going to drive right off this freaking cliff. 
no one's ever thought that. Like you, you don't get to an intersection, okay, where you can go right or you can go left and think, I'm just gonna blow right through this. Unless you're like texting, I've done that before, right? You go right through the freaking <laughs> intersection. You don't want to do that. It's a true story. I did that in Kentucky one time, and it was like, I mean, it was in the middle of nowhere, like where Cody was just driving through. So I was okay, but it was pretty scary. But you don't get to a, you don't get to a two-way intersection. I guess it would be a three-way, but you don't get to a right and left turn and decide to go straight. And this two-way street approach is is what I think saves agents from getting caught in that gray area, that abyss, that that uh, that purgatory, if you will, which is between making money this way and making money that way. Instead, you're in this gray area. So the two-way street approach is simple. Anybody you talk to, they either they're either they either belong on the ACA, right? They either belong on a marketplace plan, okay, or they or they're good fit for potential short-term medical or other products like that. We're going to get into the products you, you need here in a minute, but they're, they're not a good fit for both oftentimes, okay? And the two-way street approach is simple. Those that qualify for a subsidy or those that, and I'll, I'll give more info on this in the Facebook group, Health Insurance Hustlers, we'll talk about this. If you have any questions on some of the terminology I'm using, feel free. I assume this is a health insurance webinar. I assume when we talk some health insurance topics, you're going to kind of understand it. If you don't, that's okay. So if you go left, right, that's, that's a subsidized ACA policy, they, they're, they're getting some savings right off of that premium. And so therefore, you've got the opportunity to educate your client and bundle in supplemental coverage, right? Accident plans, fixed benefit plans, critical illness, things that will supplement that policy, right? So that's going to make you money, okay? The other way you're going to make money is the healthy self-employed that make too much for a subsidy, right? That is the other way that we go. The in-between would just be all of that stuff that's kind of like, well, they don't qualify for a subsidy, but they they want an ACA plan, blah, blah, blah. I, I walk away from those deals all day, every day. I, I send them the link. I'll, I'll send them some quotes, whatever. But I will walk away from that just like that because I know I want to work with this or I want to work with that. And so you've got to identify your market, right? Nobody, the, the manufacturers of, of Lamborghini, uh, which would be Audi, I just found that out actually. Uh, Audi did not design a Lamborghini and, and before they had the idea of who they're going to market to, right? They knew before they ever went in that, hey, this is my market. One of the reasons why we've done so well as an agency, I've done well as an agent, and there are people that are leaps and bounds above where I'm at, of course, but we've identified that we want to work with healthy, self-employed individuals, okay? So, so the, the other end of that is lower income those that qualify for a subsidy, if that's your market, that's fine, but you've got to identify it and then you've got to see where you can make money, right? You've got to, you've got to figure out where the, where the income comes from because I can promise you it's not just on the ACA policies. It's the cross sales. It's the critical illness benefits. It's the accident plans. It's the fixed benefit plans that you're bundling in to those policies that's going to make you the money. So that's the two-way street approach that we take and we really focus a lot of our efforts on healthy, self-employed individuals that make too much for a subsidy, which is what Landon was talking about when we're talking about the marketing, the funnel, Facebook identifying what it is that we, we're looking for, right? We've seen more and more high premium, high income individuals come through that funnel than really I've ever seen before. And again, we've used we've used offshore telemarketers, we've bought age leads, we've bought, you know, uh, live transfers, we've bought appointments, we've seen all kinds of stuff. I've never seen so many high premium high income individuals coming through as we are seeing now. So, you know, you, you don't get lost in that gray area. I often say, you may have a plan for everyone, right? You may be able to sell, everyone on this call, I assume probably has a license, okay? If not, they're in the process of getting a license or something like that, right? So you have a license to sell life, health, and variable annuities, most states. It doesn't mean you should, right? Like. It doesn't mean you should sell all of them or try to sell all of them, right? It find your niche, what we always talk about. Find your niche, identify that, and then go after it. And I'm here to tell you that if you're if you're going after healthy, self-employed individuals that are making too much for a subsidy, that is where the money's at. That's what we're talking about. This 750 per deal commission, nine deals a week. I know there's some folks in here that can that can sell those nine deals a week at that 750 commission, make $50,000 in the next two months and be a life changer for you. So um, identifying your market is key. Don't get stuck in that purgatory, that 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 interim of just trying to help everybody with everything, being all things, all people, because you're not Jesus, 
only Jesus was all things to all people, right? So that's just, that's that's my, like, I mean, I knew we were going to get a lot of health insurance agents on here. I wanted to talk specifically about not getting lost in that 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 abyss. And then, I don't know, you guys want me to go through, you got, you guys want me to go through my, uh, my presentation while I'm flowing? Yes. Dude, yes. who doesn't, bro? Who doesn't, right? Okay, so, hey, before you do, though, I mean, um, I, I would want to know. Uh, I mean, dude, I, I want to see some. I want to see some engagement in chat before. Um, no doubt. I mean, we got. We got. No doubt. We're gonna see five. Five. I mean, we got to see five, ten people that are like, you know, because I'm telling you, this dude, this dude makes some serious freaking money. I know what he makes. I'm not gonna share it, um, but it's a lot. And for him to walk through his actual presentation live on a webinar uh, for free is kind of silly. It's kind of silly. So uh, I'd love to see. Um, I see Matt Temin in here. Matt can't be quiet. I see Myra. Man, we got we got Lori Stiles. Lori Stiles here. We got we got, got some, winners, some awesome. Here. We, let's see let's see yeah. some action in the chat. I was excited yeah, to do this. I, I was. This is my favorite thing ever since ever since I've I've started like really training agents outside of my own agency and talking about things with with you know people all across the country, man, it's just been so exciting for me to see. And I've learned so much about the kind of the, the reason why we've done well. And I didn't even know it before. Like I didn't realize the fact that we, we were so highly targeted towards healthy self-employed individuals that are making too much money for a subsidy. I didn't know that because we targeted that was one of the reasons why we're doing so well. I just, it's just what I knew. It's just all, truthfully, when I started an insurance, when I started as a broker offering all options, I really did. I tried to sell everything. I tried to I tried to offer you know a product to every single person I talked to because I thought well why wouldn't I, I can sell everything um, it didn't work out very well where's the engagement in chat are we are we there yet dude it, we got, it, it's it's popping off you got you got um, yeah yeah it's going good oh you, you got, got it. they're all, I love it they're all, I see okay Devin Blunt's here I love it's it I love it yeah 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 it's in questions I see. I want to. Oh, I want to read some nice. of these. Uh, yeah, Landon posted in chat. I'm I've been responding to several of them. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna stand up. I'm gonna stand up. I didn't even realize that was Dude. going on. Some questions. Interesting. I've been. I've been uh, following and engaging while you guys have been. You know. There you go. Awesome. Spitting gold. Hey, Brad. Why don't you give us? G Love give it. us the. You were gonna talk about your products that you want to um, offer, and then also your presentation, and then let's just get this. You know, keep this party going, man. Yeah, so so basically, I'm just I'm just reading the chat because I'm like I'm I can't believe I missed all this action that was going on in here the whole time. I'm thinking there's only two people in the chat. One of them's me, one of them's Landon. Everyone's over here in the question, so I love it. I love it. So yeah, there's there's a few key there's a few key pieces right that you need to have in place, and and this is just from my perspective again. I mean, there there one thing that's that's unique about health insurance. Is that there's if you talk to a million different agents, you, you'll find 999,000 different ways, right? I mean, there's a lot of people that do a lot of different things, including in my own office, right? But it's it stems from again identifying our target market, which for me has always been has always been healthy self-employed individuals that make too much to qualify for a subsidy. Okay, what I mean by that is just they're not they're not really a great fit for a marketplace plan, right? They're oftentimes uh, paying $1,500 a month, $2,000 a month for a plan with a very high deductible or whatever the case is, okay? Uh, and so therefore, we we know that those people need help, right? Like the best way to, the best way to, you know, make money is to solve a problem, obviously, right? We want to, we want to solve that problem. And that's where the biggest pain point exists, in my opinion, right? It, it just, it just has always been that way, right? Healthy people, they don't want to pay for insurance, period. And if they're making too much money to qualify for a subsidy, which a lot of you guys would be, then then I mean it's 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 a it's a no-brainer, right? And so um some of the products you need in your in your in your mix, if you will, is a good short-term medical. Okay. Um you've got to have a good short-term medical in your product mix. This is for those exact people. I'm not gonna name carriers. You can Google short-term medical. You'll find it. You can reach out to me. I'll tell you what 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 we like to sell. Um, you need a good short-term medical. You need a good fixed benefit plan. 
okay? That good fixed benefit plan is either going to supplement that short-term medical in a lot of cases. Uh, that's one of my favorite bundles to sell is a fixed benefit along with a short-term medical. Okay, and then, the, and then the, the alternative side to that is for that lower income, you know, zero premium ACA policy you're selling, bundle that with a fixed benefit plan. Okay, oftentimes commissions on those products are great, but your client is going to absolutely love it because every time they use their health plan, they can also make money on their fixed benefit plan. They're going to get a reimbursement on that policy. So you need a good short-term medical. You need a good fixed benefit. You need a great dental plan, obviously. Um, I can't tell you how many, um, and I, I don't know if I did, I don't know if I ever ran one with Landon or not, but we, we have done really, really well. Off Dental policies are very low barrier to entry right very non-threatening they're they're not you know someone purchasing a dental plan is not as as uh big of a decision for some people as obviously a health policy and so marketing dental plans will oftentimes lead to alternative sales you need a good dental plan right everyone's going to ask about that and then every single policy that i sell if if i don't sell it with an accident and critical illness policy so you need a, a good short-term medical good fixed benefit a good dental plan, and then the last two are, are, in my opinion, the most crucial two pieces, a good accident plan and critical illness, okay? So, and that's not all in one bundle. Now, if you sold all of that in one bundle, that would be, I mean, you would be doing a great thing for your client, you'd be doing a great thing for your family because you'd be putting a lot of money in your pocket, but a lot of times, a lot of times, or, or all the time, when I sell any policy, there's always an accident and critical illness policy. At least I'm going to pitch it. If if they don't buy it, that's okay. But at least I pitched it. I'm going to tell you a story. I have a client. When I was in the industry, uh, when I first came into the industry, rather, I got flown up to North Carolina. I was I was probably an agent for three months. Okay, this guy flew me up to North Carolina to speak to 900 of his agents at his at his at his real estate brokers. I told this story to my agents not too long ago. I want to see in chat or in the questions. If I went and talked to 900 real estate agents, this was like five years ago. If I went and talked to 900 real estate agents, how many you think I, how many policies, how many sales, or as Cody likes to say, sales, did I walk away from? <laughs> <laughs> how many, how many uh, sales did I walk away with after speaking to over 900 real estate agents? What, what are they know. saying? Devin, Devin says Jane three. Saunders says zero. <laughs> Myra says 15, Phil Cheney says 10, oh, oh, Myra says 400. I appreciate that. I was hoping that everyone would say like 400, 500. Um, I, you know, truthfully, I might have sold like 10, 15. I think Myra was real close. I probably sold like 10 or 15 policies, right? I didn't realize, there's a lot of things that I learned from that. I took away a lot, um, but I went and I tried to kind of flex my insurance muscles and tell them all the things that I know about insurance rather than being a relatable person uh, that everyone could get along with and, and understand the fact that they don't like insurance any more than you or I. I mean, maybe if you're like me, you, you probably like it, but I, I don't know. A lot of people don't like to talk about health insurance. So I digress. The point is that same gentleman that flew me up to talk to over 900 real estate agents, I was coming back from I was coming back from, I think, a, I think a trip with you guys, Cody and Landon. I think I had just come back from a power player retreat, actually. And I got a call from, from my guy, John. His, his name is actually John. And he said, he, he, I didn't answer, actually. I, I, I sent him a voicemail. I, I talked to him all the time. He's been a client for five, six years. I sent him a voicemail. He texted me, hey, Brad, I need to talk to you. It's not about the life insurance. I'm like, thank God, because... I've like talked to him like 20 times about this life insurance policy we submitted. Long story short, I'm like, cool. He's probably got a business opportunity. He's probably got a, you know something. And so I, I call him. I said, what's going on, John? I, I kid you not. He said, he said, well, I don't know how to say, it, but I'm just going to put it like this. My wife's Judy. She's been diagnosed with breast cancer. I'm like, whoo. Like I just, I literally just left the power play retreat. I'm on like the high of highs, you know, and, and then I, and then I found that out. The point of this story is that he's been a client for five years. And this is where, I, this is a mistake that I made, truthfully. He's been a client for five years. Guess where his premiums remain for five years? Pretty much level. Guess where his age has gone up, right? He's, he's five years older now. Your insurance should cost more. So 
what have we done over five years? And 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 truthfully, I I I I didn't I made the offer right to to have the coverage, but we've kind of stripped away some coverage here and there. Now he still had coverage. He's still he's he's probably going to end up about ten thousand dollars out of pocket when all is said and done. At some point in time, he had about a thirty forty thousand dollar critical illness policy. That was a moment in time I said, I'm never selling another policy again without telling this story, without sharing the fact that, hey, listen, I'm okay if you don't want to pay the extra 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars a month for that critical illness policy. But but I but I have to like, like you I, you have to let me explain the benefits to it. You have to let me tell the story. You have to you have to at least let me walk you through what it could do for you. Right. And so I don't sell a policy, whether it's ACA, whether it's short term medical without an, a good accident and critical illness supplement okay it's very important and a lot of times i do with a, a fixed benefit so without further ado i just i'm going to take five minutes and walk you through what a presentation looks like where i will throw in that critical illness you know pitch if you will as well as uh you know just kind of a way to simplify the process for you as you go through a presentation and obviously i'm not live i don't have a, a client so i'm just going to kind of wing it right one, it's, it's, it's a three-step close. Some of you guys may have seen it. Um, I've, I've done it a few times, but it's a three-step process where we cover the basics of what health insurance covers. So, you know, hey, hey, Mr. What's, what's your, uh, what's your lady's name, Cody? The, the one you always use? Miss Betty. Betty. Miss Betty. We'll use Miss Betty. Betty. Miss Betty. Good old Miss Betty. She's been, poor Miss Betty probably has no money. She's been sold so many policies over the years that it's like, I mean, that lady's covered to the gills, man. I'll tell you. But, but I'm going to say, hey, Miss Betty, do you have the quotes up I sent you? Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you for pulling that up. Listen, I wanted to go through this with you. Okay, but the first thing that I want to let you know is that when you're talking about insurance, right, it doesn't matter. You know, I know you're on that employer plan, or I know you're on COBRA. I know you have that Blue Cross plan. I know you have ACA coverage, whatever. I, when you're talking about health insurance, okay, I believe you're really talking about coverage for three different areas, okay? You've got your day-to-day -day coverage. That would include things like doctor's visits, prescriptions, x-rays, labs, day-to-day, -day, right? Even throw some outpatient in there just to make sure we're hitting all bases. Uh, you've got your day-to-day. -day. The second thing is you've got your 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 what-if scenarios, right? We 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 obviously want to we'll get a policy in place for, for what we know, right? You said you take that high blood pressure medication. Understand we want to get a policy in place that makes sense for that. But also... We want to protect you for those what if scenarios, right? What happens if you have an accident? You know, what happens if you trip and fall? What happens, you know, the, the, the what ifs, okay? We call those accidents, obviously. And then the third reason you have coverage, and this is the real reason that you have health insurance, okay? It's not necessarily for the doctors, but it's contrary to what you might believe. The real reason you have insurance is so that if you are diagnosed with cancer, you have a major hospitalization, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of medical bills, You've got the coverage you need. Okay. So so we're gonna cover those three things, Miss Betty. Is there anything you can think of after I go through that? Is there anything you can think of, Miss Betty, that 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 may not fit into those categories? They may sometimes I get smart, sometimes I get uh I get people that you know make a smart comment and they're like, What about my Viagra? Or what about this? What if, and I'm like, well, let's put that into the day-to-day, -day, right? Whatever it might be. Um, and then and then you you can always fit what they say into one of those buckets, right? If they say, well, what happens if I get an X-ray or whatever? Well, we'll that's day to day. We'll kind of talk about that, right? So the idea is that you're creating these buckets, okay? The straight line, if you will, the the the, the wolf way. Uh, we're we're trying to get that straight line. We're trying to cover all those bases. We're trying to make it actually, you know, have a flow to it, right? It is a presentation after all. So. Um, does that make sense, Miss Betty? Yes, it does. Great. She's tracking. She's following. So I want you to write this down, if you would. Do you have a pen and paper? Okay, great. The first thing I want you to write is day to day, right? You could just put a one or just write day to day. And under that, I want you to write blank. Okay, this blank would be the network. Okay, Aetna, Cigna, United Healthcare. You name it. Doesn't matter what policy. Doesn't matter what plan. Doesn't matter. This is a universal pitch for everything. Uh, you can basically you can basically, uh, Cody distracted me here, giving away strategy session for the first 40 ages to sign up. I'm like, shoot, how can I sign up and do this at the same time? Um, <laughs> for real, can you put me on that list, Cody? Appreciate it. Done, done. Sessions are never free. Oh, I didn't um, know that would be <laughs> so, so the idea is obviously, write that down, 
Miss Miss Betty, make sure you write that down day to day. And under that, I want you to write the network. Okay, this is the network your policy runs on. Anytime you go to this, any doctor that's in network, you're gonna get network discounts, blah blah blah. It's a PPO plan. Okay, the second thing I want you to write down, and this is this is obviously where the universal fit comes into play, right? I want you to write down $50 copay urgent care, or I want you to write down telemedicine, or I want you to write down $75 urgent care copay. I want you to write whatever the case is, right? You can plug in the benefits, but you're you're having them engage with you. You're having them write this down. You're walking them through the day to day, okay? Okay, the second thing, and, and mind you, Miss Betty, one thing you're gonna notice with this policy, because the way that I build my plans, with this policy, the better, the worse your situation gets, the better the plan is actually going to cover you. So you'll notice on the day-to-day -day side, may not be the best, but what we're getting to is, is the best part of the coverage, right? And this is for if something major happens, God forbid, you know, we don't want that to happen, but you'll notice as we go through this, the worse your situation gets, the better the coverage actually is going to work for you. So second thing we're going to talk about is accidents. This is why I put an accident plan in place, right? Because in that moment, I can mention the fact that, hey, if you have an accident, I, I put a $10,000 accident benefit on this policy that will pay directly to you to cover your deductible, any out-of-pocket expenses on that Blue Cross Blue Shield plan or on that whatever the case is, right? So you've also got this accident benefit built in. It's going to offset your out-of-pocket. It's going to give you a great, um, you know, a great benefit if you do have an accident. Of course, we don't want that to happen, right? A lot of times I'll bring up if they told me that they, you know, like to exercise or they like to jog or whatever the case is, like, hey, you told me you like to run or, hey, you told me you like to do half Ironmans just for the heck of it. And so if you hurt yourself on that half Ironman, right, if you break your arm, break your leg, you trip, you fall, you wreck your bike, whatever the case is, you've got this accident plan, right? Boom. So now we've covered that. Hey, is there anything? Is you have any questions on that? Does that make sense? Great, it does. Awesome. So the last thing I want to talk about to you, and this is the real reason you have health insurance, and this is the reason why I'm talking about it last, is because I want you to remember this. If nothing else, I want you to remember this. Okay, the worse your situation gets, the better the plan actually covers you. If you're hospitalized due to something major, right? If you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of medical bills, if you, you know, whatever the case may be, right? You've got a $50,000 cancer, heart attack, stroke benefit. You've got a $50,000 critical illness plan that's built into the policy. It's meant to pay you the $50,000 to cover your deductible, your out-of-pocket expenses, anything like that if something major were to happen to you. Because a lot of times what people don't think about is that time out of work, you know, the, the travel and expenses associated with a major diagnosis. If you want to go see a specialist across the country, this is going to help you travel. And I'll, I'll often say this. Heck, Miss Betty, you can go to Vegas and put it all on black if you want. That's your money. You can do with it what you want. But the purpose of it is to offset some of your out-of-pocket expense. And so that is basically what this health insurance plan covers. Do you have any questions? Right. A lot of times those questions are going to be where you can get steered sideways. And that's why we've kind of created this process. Right. This is all of my agents use some version of the same flow. And the reason we've created that is so that if they ask a question, which is designed to take you off. I wish I had a line. It's designed to take you off that straight line. It's designed to take you off track. You can bring it back to here, which is where, hey, I covered that accident. If you, you know, that would be an accident. This is what would happen. Or an x-ray, okay, that would be day to day. You know, I mentioned you'd have a network discount. You do have a deductible, so it would go towards your deductible, whatever the case is. It's designed to bring you back home. So that in a nutshell is my presentation. Uh, you can actually, you can actually, I mean, please use it but you can use it with any plan, right? Make it your own, throw some jokes in there. Surely it's probably not even 100% my own. We've all stolen things from each other or borrowed it, but it's per perfectly okay. Just make sure you add your own twist to it. You don't try to be boring, you know, because health insurance sucks. I just make it suck a little bit less. That's what I tell every client too. Hey, you don't have to love your insurance plan. You just have to like me enough to tell me that, you don't like it and we can review all of your options. Pretty sure I stole that one from somebody too. So, you know, it's uh, it's it's okay to to borrow. So that's that's the flow. Um, you know, I, I think that we've we've probably closed, I mean, personally, I've probably closed $10 million in, in health insurance premium with that. Uh, team wise, I know we've we've closed more than that, and I've trained a lot of agents that are mine and not mine on that specific presentation. That was a flex. That was a flex. Dude, 10, 10 million. <laughs>
Nice work, dude. Well, hey, let Over me, let me bring this thing home. Uh, Cody's internet sucks, so it, in, so we don't have to like see him bounce in and out and miss his audio. Let me bring it home. Okay, so the the last thing I want to explain, and then we're we're done. Like I know you guys are exhausted. It's it's OEP. You got to get back to the grind. Maybe some of you guys are gonna keep you know flip that laptop back open and go back to work after this. Um, I want to explain um, really what the next step could be. Okay, so first off. If you don't have the budget to consistently do a, like a marketing spend, then just go buy leads or age leads or something, okay? So what? that's probably your only solution. Now, if you do have a budget, one of the things that we allow uh, or would like to do is we have a um, an actual like registration link that I posted in the chat. It looks like this. Um, I think you guys can see my screen. So if you go to this link that I posted, I'm gonna give away uh, the first 40 people, I'm gonna give away a free strategy session with the team. And then we're also, um, it looks like, wow, it looks like we've already had 11 people do it, but we, we're going to do 40 strategy sessions. Also, if you, for the first 10 people that actually do some business with us, um, I will give a $250 um, like discount of whatever the heck service we end up doing. Okay. So one of the things that, that, I, that that's only going to be the first 10, I know we're going to get more than 10 people that are going to sign up, but we're going to do that for the first 10. Um, so that's something we don't really do that often, don't need to do, but just to make sure some sort of sense of urgency comes. Now, this is not going to happen after today. So if you don't come through this link um, and you just check it out later, you're, th th there's not going to be a discount. So why not take action um, as well? So that, that link is what you can click on. I posted it in the actual chat. And one of the things that I wanted to kind of talk about too is, is real, real quick, one of the things that we're doing for Brad right now that is the newest sort of most innovative scope of work that is really interesting is we're actually generating leads with a human being answering messaging questions as well. So what that looks like is essentially what we're doing is we're creating a video package and we're allowing them to send us a message. And we have staff members in our office that are responding as Brad and setting appointments for Brad. Some quick numbers on that um, is with $1,100 of ad spend, he's gotten into 28 conversations, 12 total hot leads, six actual meetings and like four sales on that. And today we had an $85 ad spend day with four actual appointments today. Um, and so Brad can kind of attest to that. But one of the things, the only real reason I'm bringing that up, first off, if you if you wanted to do that, that's a, a different service. Um, we, we charge $400 a month on top of our normal management fee. The reason we come up with the $400 is because it takes about an hour a day per person, 20 business days, uh, a month and that's so it's 20 bucks an hour so 400 bucks that's how we do it or you can answer your own questions if you want right the main reason i bring that up and brad this is probably the first time you're hearing this buddy of these conversations that we're getting into you on on your behalf what do you think the what do you think the hesitation is of three out of ten of these people of why they don't book a meeting what do you think they're going to do first before they book a meeting with you pop quiz you don't know what i'm going to say you may not know the uh, answer what if, what are they going to do first they're going to look me up they're going to go to your website Right. Three out of 10 people do not schedule an appointment right away. They say, I'm going to go to Brad's website. I'm going gonna, gonna to go to your website first and check it out. And I may or may not reach out that way. So I'm, I, it's now more than ever important to have a good educational focused website. We obviously do all web development as well. Um, but the whole point of why I bring that up is, is I didn't really realize for health insurance how important it is for Brad's brand to be on point because three out of 10 of these conversations that we're getting through this campaign are saying, eh, I don't really want to set an appointment now. I'm going to go check out Brad's website and I may circle back. So if Brad's website isn't on point, he's going to lose that opportunity. These guys are high net worth individuals that are shopping and self-employed. So, you know, one of those deals walks away because his website isn't on point. Like he's losing some serious jack. So um, do you have anything else to add before we wrap this thing up, Brad? Well, I just want to, I'm kind of finally getting to look through some of these questions, man. I've had so much fun. Uh, doing this, I, I love to do this, but the a lot of it is is hey, how do I target these folks? Um, you know what what I need help on the bundling side of things, um, some of that type of stuff. And, and listen, you know one of the one of the opportunities that we have as agents is is that we get to work over the. I mean, with health insurance, I've sold uh, ninety nine point five percent of my business over the phone right? Almost all of it. I don't know why my camera's starting to freak out and make me look like a ghost now, but um, the the point is that that you you can work in non-resident states. Like, I mean, go after the states that have the, the nice, you know, product mix. You know, Jeffrey says, what's a fixed benefit plan? So, 
um you know it's it's uh and how much money <laughs> that's hilarious um not enough not enough is the answer to that question i don't not make enough money but a fixed benefit plan is basically just a plan that'll pay fixed benefits set dollar amounts for covered services um some of these plans some of these bundles right will certainly uh make sense in your state some of them will not and so the point i'm trying to make is that if you're in a state that's you know, very restricted with those types of options, then it may be wise to get a couple non-resident states, learn the product mix in your state, all while, you know, still being able to help folks outside. So um, I will I will say for those of you that aren't already in it, uh, Health Insurance Hustlers is the Facebook group. Um, why don't I, I'll, let me grab a link to that real quick and I'll post that in the chat. So that's a, a space where we're gonna, you know, keep dedicating exclusive content to health insurance. Matter of fact, I messaged one of my buddies the other day who posted a Medicare question on there. And I said, hey, no Medicare questions in my group, man. Save that for the Medicare group. Um, but we're going to continue with that stuff. You can always reach out to me directly. You know, I love to do this stuff. And uh, obviously, schedule a strategy session. We'll go through some more products, some more, you know, uh, more targeting that market. Um, to be honest with you, it's all that I know is how to target that market. So thank you guys for tuning in and uh, hope you guys got something out of that. All right, Brad, thank you so much, man. Cody, we're gonna, we're gonna call it here. Um, guys, uh, Cody, maybe you can, is the recording coming after this automatically or do we need to email that out? Yes, so, so it, the, we will email the recording out and then um, you, you may actually be able to put it on uh, one, of our, one of our channels or, or share it out and email it out too, so. Right on, right on. All right, so I just uh, gave a shout out to Advanced Insurance Marketing Facebook group as well. That's kind of where I play ball. Go to the link um, that I posted here if you want a free strategy session, talk anything marketing. If we're already doing business together, you probably don't know about the Messenger campaign uh, because we just literally like rolled it out. Um, and oh, I was gonna say, Landon, on that, what they what you didn't tell them is I closed two. I closed two out of like the first four conversations that we that we had. That's usually yeah. the way these things work. I get so fired up about the idea that I'm like, I'm really like trying to sell the first few, and then I'm like, all right, it works. Let's give it away. It's, well, I mean, you it's, got four today. You got four appointments today on eighty-five dollars of ad spend. That's not a bad ROI there. I so, I appreciate and, that. Yeah. Well, that but that the reason it that's like I'm still learning that people still loved personal touch. So that's like a step up above the Samson. Honestly, the automation is not as good as a real live person messaging as you. Um, so that's why we're doing it. And I, and I actually think it's going to over long term be, be a killer product. So, um, all right, dudes, thank you so much, Cody, Brad. You guys rock, man. Thank Have you guys all for being here. Go kill it. Hey, if anybody, Brad said that if anybody proves that they make 50 grand on this AOEP, that we'll do something special for you. I think Cody said he's going to get an 8% ticket for you too or something like that. So if you can, yeah, we're it, gonna fly, fly your fly you around the world in a private jet as well. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, hey, definitely track that. I would love to to keep track. I would love to stay in in touch with everybody. that's on. Appreciate you being on. Brad is is a freaking health insurance beast. The the true health insurance hustler. Landon is a marketing freak. I call him. He's six nine. I call him the Greek freak. Um, because you got Giannis in the compo in the NBA, so I call him the Greek freak of marketing. He's like six nine as well. So, uh, e either way, this has been a absolute blast. Please track. I would love to see who makes 50K in the, in the next eight weeks. And I promise you we'll do something special for you. Boom, boom. All right, boys. Have a good night. Brad, go Hey, and, and, and don't hey, – real quick, too, do not miss out on this free strategy session. It's, it's impacted Brad's business ridiculously. It's free. It's sitting there. If you don't sign up and you don't make 50K or you end up freaking buying something from a vendor that you hate, then it's your own fault because it's free. It's right in the chat. I would click, I would sign up, I would have a free trade session with us because it's a no brainer. If you don't do business with us, great. But either way, at least still all the knowledge out of these two guys' head for free again. Okay, so do that. All right. all right, have a good day or a good night. See you guys. All right, guys. You guys. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. You're a new agent, you wanna make 10K your first month, okay? I made just over nine grand my very first month as an insurance agent. I wasn't 10, but I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did to make nine. Who's watching thinking, dude, I'd love to make nine? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do better than I did, specifically how to get in front of people 